My name is Joe Ray. I'm a psych alumni of the class of 2018 from Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania. I went to peak schooling in Cape Coral, Florida, and I'm a polygraph examiner. When I went to polygraph school, I was only 23 years old. Our instructor literally asked the class, how many of you have actually had to kill someone? And I mean, I saw basically everyone but me and another kid raise their hands. I'm like, oh, wow. Like you actually have to think about not just yourself and what you've done, but what the examinee has gone through as well. And that really surprised me. Polygraph is definitely a tool that isn't just a lie detector. It's more measuring physiological reactions that are correlated to deception within a person. TV shows are a big contributor to the misconception of the usage of the polygraph. So during like NCIS, dramatize the polygraph, then I think that definitely hurts the field for sure. When I administer an exam, I definitely want to give the examinee the fairest shot of providing information to me that so that they come up NDI or no deception indicate. I want to give them the best chance to pass the exam. I'm not there to belittle them or judge them. I'm there as a neutral person to give a fair exam and give them the chance of passing it. So as far as what the polygraph records, there's pneumos, which is breathing, uh, sweat gland activity, blood pressure, heart rate, which is cardio, which funnels into one, and the plethysmograph, which is blood pulse amplitude, so how much blood is in your fingertips, all correlate to detecting deception within an individual. When it comes time to actually hooking up an examinee to the polygraph, you sit them down and say, all right, on this clipboard, I have numbers one through seven. And as you can see, you purposely take out the number four. Now you hand the clipboard to them and you say, could you write the number four on that clipboard for me? And with that, I'm gonna ask you, did you write the number one? Did you write the number two? Did you write the number three? And so when I ask you, did you write the number four? I purposely want you to tell me no. And the reason I have you do that is because I want you to know that I know, I can see how your body reacts when you are lying to me, when you and I both know that you are not telling me the truth. For a hypothetical example, say there was a case related to um, a sex crime or rape. In that case, since rape is a legal term, you cannot, any ethical polygraph examiner will not use the term, did you rape so-and-so? you'd have to ask something more along the lines of, did you force that person to engage in sexual intercourse? As far as the reason I personally don't do infidelity testing anymore, a lot of the clients or the examinees solely like really wanted to rely on the results of the polygraph and they shouldn't really solely rely on the polygraph because it's not 100% accurate. So basically the examinee was telling me how his entire marriage was like writing on the results of this test. So it kind of pressured me a little bit into hoping it was a uh, no deception indicated test. That his entire marriage was quote unquote, on the line for this. He had a lot at stake. Infidelities were taking a toll on me. So right now I'm not administering exams. I woke up every morning, I'm like, I don't wanna do this. <laughs> I don't wanna do this infidelity testing. So I really wanna get more into criminal diagnostic testing or like screening for applicants because their cognitive processing isn't going to heavily rely on the results as much. You really have to think about the examinee sitting in the chair. Very serious cases like murder and rape. I think about it every day. I just went to the latest American Polygraph Association conference. A supervisor, special agent from the FBI 
was talking about report building with just the examining, you know, just getting familiar with them and just being just a basic human. Even though they're a suspect, you just still have to treat them like a human being. And one of the clips he showed was from a supposed or supposed to be interrogation where the officer brought in a suspect into the interrogation room and he asked the person, hey man, do you need to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water? And the suspect was like, yeah, could I have a cup of water, please? So the cop left and what I saw was the suspect pull out a 45 automatic gun and shot himself in the head on tape. And ever since I saw that, I just think about how important it is to treat people with dignity and respect every single day.